Okay, so um, back in ZBrush, uh, we have our Z tool ready. Uh, I just uh, saved it after the last lesson, and um, so we can get started where we left off. Should be getting familiar with the um, the procedure about now. Okay. Now we have this layer is what we worked on in the last lesson. I'm going to uh, divide this another couple of times just so that we can get some really, really nice tight detail. And deselect that. Select a new 3D layer. We might rename this right from the start. Okay. Now, the first thing I want to um, focus on is this section here. I'd like some sort of um, variations here, some sort of striations, perhaps. Now, uh, one thing you can do, um, my computer isn't slowing down. Um, we're up to about a million polys at the moment. My computer isn't slowing down, but if yours is at this stage, it might be a good idea just to hide out parts of the mesh that you're not working on at that, at that point in time. And that's just using the control and shift keys to, um, to mask off this area. So what I might do is zoom in a little bit more. I'm using the hotkey for that uh, instead of this button, which is to hold Alt, drag with the mouse, and then release Alt while still dragging, which can be a bit sort of a bit tricky, a bit of a juggle. So um, using the scale button over here can be a bit easier. Now what I'm going to do is. I'm going to um, try changing tools. And I'm going to change over to a stitch tool. A stitch tool is one of my favorite tools. Um, for those of you who haven't used it before, you can basically drag out stitches or drag out a, um, a type of um, geometry uh, using all of the settings that, that come with the stitch tool. But uh, what I like to do is um, use a different alpha and see what sort of effects we get with that. Because we're trying to get a sort of a nice biological looking um, design. So I'm just going to go for that alpha. I'll take the Z intensity down a little bit. And let's see how that looks. And so we produce these sorts of scales here on our mesh. And this can be um, can be a good way to get a sort of a nice biological look. Now uh, you can see I get off track there, so I'm just going to undo that line. and try to trace as close to that line as possible. And so you can see we've got this nice sort of um, look there. And uh, mm, seems like my fine detail layer trouble accessing that. Hang on a second. Okay, and uh, as you've seen in previous lessons, uh, I personally don't know everything um, to do with uh, ZBrush. I'm discovering things as we go along as well. So um, I'm as much a student as you are. The reason why I can't access this uh, fine details layer is because I have part of the mesh hidden. And so if I unhide the mesh, you'll f you, you can see that that comes back and I can switch this on and off. So it is working, it's just that we can't 
make adjustments to a layer once um, part of the mesh is hidden. So uh, I'll just jump back to uh, uh, where I was and um, now you can see that the, uh, these scales are coming in. We've got uh, a sort of a biological look happening here. Um, it sort of looks a bit like snake scales, perhaps uh, the feel that there is something sort of um, sliding along underneath this um, this area, or perhaps this was a, another sort of biological entity that's been molded into the wall. And um, what I might do is I'll just vary the size just slightly around these edges, just so that I can, um, oops, I'll go back to the uh, the stitch tool that I was using. And top and bottom there. And now, what I might do is, because these edges do look a little bit harsh, they look a little bit sort of pixelated, what I'm going to do is go over those with my smooth brush. Now because I have um, a closed um, ZBrush and uh, reopened it and re-imported the tool, I just have to go through and make sure that my tools are set to the uh, levels that I want them to be at. So I might just sort of just go over these just a touch, just to give it a more sort of subtle sort of look. Any areas which I feel might be a problem, like here the scales are overlapping quite a bit, just bring my draw size down and just sort of blend those a little bit better. Okay. We're basically just just giving it this sort of um, this look like there's some sort of strange texture going on, some sort of object underneath there. Now I'll just go back to my standard brush, and I'm just going to bump up a couple of these areas just to make it look like these scales are. And again, I need to bring down my intensity just to make it look like these scales are. Uh, perhaps going in underneath the um, this area here, just so that it doesn't sort of blend in too smoothly. And a lot of this is sort of a bit of busy work. A lot of this um, perhaps could be done off camera, but uh, it's a nice sort of quick thing. So uh, there we go. And of course to uh, check how it's looking, I can bring back the rest of the mesh. I'll check to see if I like that. I can change the intensity if I want a more sort of subtle look, or if I want it to be more exaggerated. You can see what various things look. I don't quite like it like that because that sort of looks like it's a, an ear of corn I do prefer to have it more sort of a more of a scaly sort of um, texture. Of course, now that I've said corn, you can't really see anything else other than a piece of corn there, can you? But we can live with that. So yeah. In fact, to get rid of that sort of illusion of corn, what I'm going to do is I'll go back to my stitch brush. I'll change alphas to, um, let's see, I'll try that, and we might just drag something like that across the top, and again we can smooth that out just a touch. So yeah, there we go.